In this video, I am discussing the biblical foundations of the real presence of Jesus Christ in the Eucharist. This is the second video on this topic. For those that missed the first one, I'll put a link in the description. In the last video, I left with Gospel of Luke chapter 24, when the disciples on Easter met a traveler, and the traveler turned out to be Jesus, uh, but they didn't find out until he broke the bread and disappeared. Why did Jesus disappear? And the reason being is so that he would be associated with the breaking of bread. Now let's keep with that idea that Jesus being associated with the breaking of bread and go into Acts of the Apostles, which is also written by Luke. It's Luke's second volume. And we see Acts chapter 2, verse 42, that the disciples were devoted to the apostles' teaching and the breaking of bread. Acts chapter 2, 46 says they did it daily. Notice they couldn't practice Eucharist in the temple for obvious reasons. They had to do it in their homes. There were no churches at this point. Acts 2.47 is peculiar because it says that God added to their numbers. So it would seem that God has something to do with the church growing and bringing people in. And that seems, it, that kind of correlates with a verse that we hear at Mass every week from Revelation that goes like, blessed are those who are called to the Lamb's Supper. Revelation 19, verse 9. So just keep that in mind. I'll discuss more of the Lamb's Supper and the Mass in a bit. What we need to do now is to discuss John's Gospel, mainly John 6, which is the real meat and potatoes of the Eucharist discussion. In fact, John chapter 6, chapter six is called the bread of life discourse. John chapter 6 starts off with the feeding of 5,000. Now, what's the key verse in that beginning? It's verse 4, saying that the Passover festival is near. Why is this important? Because it's John's gospel that points out that Jesus is the Lamb of God. You might remember in the last video, John Chapter 1, verse 29, as well as with 36, John the Baptist claims that Jesus is the Lamb of God. The Lamb is feeding his sheep at Passover. What's he feeding them? Bread. Now, after feeding of 5,000, Jesus walks on water uh, when the disciples take the boat out, going back to Capernaum. In John chapter 6, verse 25 through 71 is the discussion where Jesus compares himself to the manna in Exodus, when God let the Israelites have the bread from heaven called manna, Jesus now assimilates himself to that manna, that he is the bread of life, and whoever eats this bread will have eternal life. And he shows that the old bread, the manna from the Old Testament, all those Israelites died. However, his fulfillment, his bread, him being the new bread, those who eat his flesh and drink his blood will have eternal life. And he has to say it three times because the audience who's listening don't believe him and they don't get it. They, isn't this Jesus uh, from Nazareth? And so he has to continually keep saying this until he says, for my flesh is real uh, food and my blood is real drink. That's John 6, 55. And that verse will be contested by Catholics and non-Catholics for centuries. Was Jesus speaking symbolically or was he speaking literally that we actually have to eat his flesh and drink his blood to attain eternal life? Well, what we see later on in the passage is that 
his own disciples turned away from him because they could not accept this teaching. They didn't believe that they could eat his flesh or drink his blood. They believed in the Old Testament sayings of drinking the blood of an animal and how uh, blasphemous that was. And it shouldn't be too far of reach. Even today, people don't believe he was really talking literally. And later on in that passage, we see that the disciples walk away from him. The teaching is too hard to swallow. It's the only time in any of the Gospels that his own disciples leave him and, and can't follow him anymore because they believed in all the Old Testaments talking about unclean animals and drinking the blood of a dead animal uh, being blasphemous. So for those who believe that Jesus was speaking symbolically, they have to come up with an answer for why the disciples could not accept it and why they turned away. Why was a symbol or a metaphor too hard to accept that they stopped following Jesus? Apologists also like to point out, humorously, I might add, the painstaking difficulty that Jesus has to go explaining himself if for a metaphor. Seriously, read John chapter 6 from verse 25 on, and notice how many times Jesus has to try and explain himself as the bread from heaven. I, I, it's comical. I'm, I'm waiting to read. Uh, Jesus says, truly, I tell you, I, I can walk across water, but I, I can't get my point across to save your lives. Seriously, though, if we, if we stick with the symbol idea and we add, a, add in Matthew, Luke, and Mark, take this, this is my body, it gives further evidence that God is speaking literally. In addition to that, let's throw in St. Paul's letter to the Corinthians if we need further evidence. First letter to the Corinthians, chapter 10, verse 16. Is the cup not a participation in Jesus' blood? Is the bread not the participation in Jesus' body? Let's switch gears a little bit and discuss eternal life. Let's go to John chapter 3, when Jesus is talking to Nicodemus at night. Nicodemus says that he believes Jesus is from God, for no one could perform the miracles unless he was from God. That's John 3, verse 2. And Jesus responds by saying, truly I tell you, you must be born again in order to see the kingdom of God. And a little later in that conversation, John chapter 3, verse 16 Jesus says that God sent his only son and those that believe in him will receive eternal life. But didn't Jesus just contradict his own saying? Nicodemus said he believes he is sent from God. And Jesus said, in order to see the kingdom, you must be born again. And now he's saying, just believe in him. Is it a contradiction? Furthermore, is it a contradiction of the bread of life discourse in chapter 6? Keep in mind, those that turned away and stopped following him were his own disciples, those who believed he was sent from God. The conclusion you have to come to is either... A, Jesus contradicts himself in John chapter 3 and chapter 6, or B, belief in God is not the only requirement for eternal life. There are other items, other actions, other sacrifices or sacraments that are involved in order to receive eternal life. Lastly, I want to include St. Paul's letter to the Romans, where Paul 
says several times that we are justified by Jesus' death on the cross. And that is true. Um, More specifically, chapter 5. I'm not denying that. The only thing I will say in addition to that is, was the Roman church practicing Eucharist like the Corinthian church? So I see that I'm getting near the 10-minute marker, and I, uh, I hate to go over 10 minutes. Uh, so I looks like I'm going to have to make another video on Eucharist because I have not put it all... Um, I haven't talked about the Passover meal uh, in regards to the Mass, uh, which I want to get to next. Uh, but before I go, I want to give a shout-out to two people who commented uh, very nicely on my last video. Thank you very much. That was Jim Farron and Monday Eve. Both of uh, you guys, thanks, uh, or gals, I, I apologize, if, uh, Monday Eve, if um, I'm assuming Jim Farron is a man, and Monday Eve, I'm not sure uh, if you're male or female, but, but I want to say how much I, I am thankful I am for you folks commenting on the last video. Uh, to all the rest of you, if you'd like to comment, I would appreciate it, but thank you again for watching. I hope uh, this is getting to some of you. Thanks again.